Right, so let's go ahead and open the box here. There we have the pixel. So let's just grab this. Nice and small. I am going to be switching over to this. I'm going to be using a smaller size phone for the first time in a couple of years. So I'll see how that goes. Other things in the box. You have your SIM card tray opener and uh, some uh, user guide information. Let's see if there's anything else. There's also a Google and Team Pixel sticker, which is pretty awesome. We have here the Google Pixel Buds. Let's go and have a look at how these look. So there are mixed reviews with this. However, the Google Pixel Buds are convenient in the sense that they are powered by the USB Type-C rather than a standard 3.5mm headphone jack port. So that is one thing because this phone doesn't have a headphone jack. So you obviously won't be able to charge your phone at the same time but again that might be a minor issue for most people. Then you have your charging cable, your data transfer dongle and then you also have a headphone jack adapter as well in case you want to use your standard headphones in there. And then lastly, you have your power socket plug. So that's everything in the box. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of the uh, first impressions. All right, so this is one of my favorite parts is taking this protective cover off of the phone. It makes that nice smooth noise. Nice. Right, so I've got the 64GB clearly white. I'm going to be putting a clear case on this as well just to protect it. Now let me go ahead and turn this on. It is a smaller phone compared to all my previous phones. I've had the Samsung S9 Plus, I've had the Samsung S8 Plus, I've had the Huawei Mate 20 Pro and I'm just used to larger phones. The previous Google Pixel phone I had was the Pixel 2 XL. So this will be the first time I'm switching to a smaller version phone, primarily because I don't really like that notch that comes on the Pixel 3 XL. But nonetheless, I'm gonna try this out and see how it goes. Obviously, there's less screen to body ratio than a lot of the phones out there, but at the moment, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna see if I can get used to it, but nonetheless, let's take a look. Right, straight off the bat, this is a 5.5 inch OLED display. It has about 77% screen to body ratio. Other phones out there are just above 90% now almost. It's getting closer to 95% coming up fairly soon. So it still has all those bezels, but again, you don't need to have a look at that terrible notch like the Pixel 3 XL. The resolution is 1080 by 2160 pixels, and there is a 443 PPI density as well. It's not the sharpest of screens. The Huawei Mate 20 Pro is a lot sharper. I think the other phones like the Samsung ones are a little bit brighter as well. Although it's not an AMO LED screen, it is something that you can get used to and hopefully that's something that Google can work on in the future updates. Now it does have Snapdragon 845 processor and that is the flagship version out there at the moment by Qualcomm. But it only has 4GB of RAM which is not so flagship compared to what else is out there on the market. You have phones which have double that up to 8GB of RAM. Now they've still opted for that single rear camera. It is 12 megapixels, but the software behind it to give you those crystal clear photos, especially the portrait modes, I still think the Pixel 3 is going to be one of the best contenders in the upcoming 6 months. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see if anything changes. And with the video recording it does record at 2160p at 30 frames per second, but it can do 1080p of up to 120 frames per second and 720p at up to 240 frames per second. So not quite the slow motion recording like some of the other phones like the Huawei and the Samsung that can go up to 960 frames per second on the slow motion recordings. But nonetheless, they've kept it standard and hopefully they can work on that a little bit more with 4K at 60 frames per second in the future updates. Now the front facing camera is an 8 megapixel f1.8 aperture wide camera lens, but it can also do f2.2 ultra wide pictures as well. Now it's worth noticing with the ultra wide feature, it doesn't have any autofocus. That is only on the 1.8 aperture mode of the front facing camera, but nonetheless, it can take some really cool, awesome wide selfie shots. Now in terms of the body, this phone is now compatible with wireless charging, and it also has a squeeze to press feature to open up Google Assistant, like so. Hi Boomer, I'm your assistant, here to help you throughout your day. It's pretty easy to access Google Assistant if you need to. You'll also notice that they don't have any headphone jack, but they do provide headphones that can run off directly from the USB Type-C. 
and you have your SIM card tray at the bottom of the phone now as well. On the left hand side of the phone you don't have any buttons but on the right hand side you have your volume button and this nice lime green button for the power as well. There's no in-screen fingerprint scanner like the direction some of the phones are now going in but you have your traditional very fast fingerprint scanner at the back. Now one thing the Pixel is always good for is the portrait modes in low lighting. My S9 Plus could not take any good quality portrait pictures or live focus pictures in very low lighting, indoor lighting. So that's something that the Google Pixel phones have really been good at. So I'm just going to take a quick portrait picture from the front camera. Let that process. And you can see here, it's just done an amazing job. Picked up all of the colors, quite vibrant, very clear. Now, finally, it does have a 2900 milliamp hour battery life. So I'm not sure how long this is going to last in day to day usage. I predict I'm going to be carrying my portable charger with me at all times and I'm just going to have to charge it maybe a couple times throughout the day if I'm doing very heavy usage but I'm going to test it out to see if I can make it last the whole day without charging it again. I don't think so because you have the phones like the Huawei Mate 20 Pro that are 4200 milliamp hours they will just last for ages and ages but I'm going to test that out and see how that goes. If I do switch phones from the Pixel 3 I reckon the battery life is probably going to be one of the reasons why I do that. So that's a quick run through and first impressions of the phone. I hope you guys like that. If there's anything else you want me to review on the Pixel 3 itself, then uh, leave a comment below. I've got a comparison coming up with the camera on the Pixel 3 compared to the OnePlus 6T. So make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.